Hello and welcome back to my second Redstone collection. Today I'll be showing off a few devices that I've been working on in my free time. I hope you enjoy. To start off, we have a one white tolerable binary counter. It, the outputs are inverted and it runs on five redstone ticks. So if we speed up the tick rate a little bit, you'll see that it works amazingly well. Alright, that's good enough. And if you pause it, so right now, uh, in actuality, these are the ones that are on. What you could do is you can invert everything. And once you've inverted everything, you could increment it by one and then invert everything back again. And now you'll see that it is decremented by one. And then there's also a reset. All right, next up, we have a binary to serial and a serial back to binary transcoder. So this is the binary to serial. It's really simple. And we're just going to encode 10101101. It's going to go to the next station and save everything. So it's going to be 10101101. And you can keep it in here for as long as you want. And when you're ready, you can just send it off to the next station. So for this version, uh, you can actually get an output out while still allowing a retransmission. Unfortunately, uh, the outputs are delayed by one redstone state for every bit. And again, you can send it off to the next station. This time, uh, the outputs are below. I forgot to mention another thing, which is you can actually get the outputs from the back for both designs over here. And let's send it off to the next station. This one is modified, where your output is synchronized. And the last two over here do not have any retransmission uh, ability. However, uh, this one is still synchronized, while the last one is the most bare bones serial receiver you can receive. So let's send it off to both stations this time. As you can see, this one has a synced in output, and this one you can just get your outputs directly from the composters. And again, this is just the most bare bones versions you can get for whatever purposes you need. Let's send a different code to just show that it's not a fluke. So let's do 01100101. That's good enough. Send it through, everything gets saved, send it through to the next station, everything gets saved, again, synchronized, and these two will automatically update the outputs. The only thing that you really need to watch for is that this is the only block that could potentially get stuck in the wrong stage uh, while everything else will in a sense fix itself over time. So always remember that this observer should always be on the bottom side rather than the top side. And yeah, that's it for the binaries to uh, serial and serial to binary transcoders. All right, next up we have vertical signal transmission. So something I didn't like about just conventional bubble column signal transmission was that people didn't care for the difference in time between the breaking and the reforming of the bubble column. But what I figured out was that you could just double the amount of bubble columns you use. The only problem was figuring out a way to select between the left or the right bubble column. So I came up with a pretty simple solution where I just have a toggle or which one it uses. So every time the signal gets sent through the rail, uh, the observer updates, powers this block, which then powers the node block, which then updates the piston and then shifts the observer to the other side. And if you go all the way up, you have the same thing. Uh, so what happens is that when this water column breaks, sends a signal into this observer, which causes this piston to push it to the next bubble column. 
and over here you just have pistons that break the water column and enough water sources all around it to reform. So let's take a look. So the great thing about this is that you can run it at hopper speed or 4 red stone ticks. And if you have a single slice, you can actually run it at 3 red stone ticks. But unfortunately, with the way that the water sources reform, I do not fully understand why. You have to have a minimum of 4 red stone ticks for a reliable output. Next up, I have a little device that I made because somebody on r slash redstone on reddit needed some help and I thought it would be a fun challenge. So this is a lunar calendar. So every time uh, a new day arrives, whether it be thunderstorm or using a bit, as long as this device is loaded in, it would decrement the signal strength by one. And once it's on the last signal strength and another day passes, it will go back up to eight. So let's just do a tick wall. And what you see is that every time it goes to a new day, the lamps drop by one level. New day goes back all the way to eight. Let's drag decrement it by one more. And that should be good enough. So another thing is that it's incredibly easy to fix desync issues. So let's say that uh, you know it's not supposed to be on the seventh, but it's supposed to be on the sixth. What you can do is you can just flip this to night mode and then flip it back to day mode and everything decrements by one again. Next up, we have a signal strength decrement cell. Basically what happens is that when this uh, lever is off, your signal strength is going to decrement all the way to 0 and then reset to 15. And every time it hits 0, it decrements the next cell by 1. And of course, you can control your input so that it just decrements by 1. So every time you flip it on and off, it just decrements by 1. And then there's a full reset for everything. And the nice things about this cell is that you can actually change how much you want to decrement it by. So by increasing the level of the composter, you can decrease it by 2, 3, or however many you want. And then you can also control what your starting signal strength should be. So the reason why I use respawn anchors is because I want to reduce the amount of tile entities I use. But if you're feeling a little bit cheap, you can use a barrel and put uh, items inside to get your desired signal strength. A thing to take note about respawn anchors is that if you use it anywhere else other than another, it could potentially explode. So just watch uh, when you're trying to build this. Next up, we have a signal strength to binary output display. So this is something I worked uh, quite a few hours on with Datsner. So basically what happens is that you can control your input and what's going to happen is that your binary output is going to change over here and basically what it is, this is 3 white tolerable. Last but not least, I have a 2 and 1 this time. So first of all, I have a brand new vertical decoder. So I found out recently that you can actually have walls side by side together and still send a signal down. So the layout is a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same. I just shifted the second layer of walls inwards. I reduce uh, another layer of blocks and the signal down for the clock is over here this time. And the second thing is that I have a XY matrix decoder with pass through. So I was watching a video by Walt Jarvis on his new display and one thing I noticed is that uh, his XY decoder uses a lot of signal strength and I tried to limit my use of redstone wire so I tried to challenge myself to try to come up with something that does the same thing uh, with a smaller footprint and hopefully less lag. Uh, so first of all let's look at that piston over there as you can see the pass through works you can fire the piston or 
I can send a binary code into the system and this very same piston will fire. So what this allows me to do is that I can actually stack multiple of these decoders. Uh, so you just have your normal uh, horizontal decoder and vertical decoder plus the XY decoder. I can stack multiple of them side by side. And what can happen is that I can actually get multiple pistons to fire on a wall using just binary codes and and uh, ROM or something like that. All right, guys. This is my second written collection. I wasn't really sure whether any of these devices required their own video, so I just decided to combine all of them together. Uh, but if you've been following me on my Discord or subreddit, or just browsing in Ashla's Redstone, you'll probably see me around every now and then. Uh, I really hope to get 100 subscribers soon. I actually only need two more, uh, because I'm actually going to release a very very big build that i've been working on for quite a few months and i really really want it to be a mild zone anyway guys thank you for watching this video if you if you enjoyed it yourself please leave a like comments and subscribe hit that bell icon to be notified and last but not least stay zen bye <music>